Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, along with my good buddy, Seth V. And on today's episode of Between Two Knives, we're talking about some blades that are pretty underrated that we think you should take a look at. So let's get into it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so I think this episode was kind of inspired by uh, a little bit about what I did on the Knife AQ this past weekend, where I tried to kind of look past some of my like initial reactions on some questions and dive deeper for, like, like reach for some answers a little bit more. So you'd see something maybe a little bit more unusual, and it got me to thinking. I mean, we've talked about underrated knives on this channel before, but I thought it'd be great to get Seth's perspective in on this as well, because uh, there's a lot of great knives out there that some good ones tend to get buried. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, we each picked out five uh, that we think deserve a little bit of extra attention. And uh, we'll let Seth take it away with the first one. Okay. Um, first up, I wanted to pick a couple of knives from some of our most popular brands uh, that offer a lot of knives. And these particular models, I think, get maybe a little buried by picks that are just generally more popular. Yeah, like not everything, you've got like stuff like the Bug Out or the Para 3 that might overshadow some of the other cool Right, stuff. super easy to recommend, great knives of course, mm -hmm. but yeah. Uh, so the first one, I guess I'll And grab. I don't know if he's gonna make me guess at any of these or not. We... Well, how about I tell you the, br no, you know what, I think you will guess it. So I'm okay. just gonna, I'm gonna roll right into it and grab my pick from Benchmade, which is the Mini Presidio 2. Yeah. This thing, like I said, it gets overshadowed. You know, the bug out is uh, in this similar sort of size range. There we go. In fact, my yeah. EDC are these days quite close. Very similar size range for sure. Um, but the Presidio, I, I gotta say, I think it's better for the money. It's, yeah. it's a little cheaper. Um, it is $127.50 right now. Versus the bug out roughly 135, 140. Is like that where we're starting here? now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you get the CF Elite, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've kind of thought of the Presidio series as sort of the better Griptilian in a way. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit bigger, has a lot of the same traits though. Uh, the blade is slicier, but again, you're right. The mini, it's it's it gets overlooked even by me, and I've even featured it in a Knife AQ before. Yeah, for me personally, the the mini uh, Griptilian is a little small, and this mini Presidio isn't all that mini. I mean, it's got yeah. three point yeah. two inches of blade. Yep, S thirty V. It's a great EDC size. So the thing I I like about this uh, pick that you made is, let's compare it to that bug out again. There's some people that don't like uh, the amount of flex that those handles have because they go they go for the the lightweight at the expense of yeah, more yeah. rigidity. This guy, full liners, mm -hmm. you've got a similarly neutral handle shape, even actually a little bit more neutral than the bug out. And you've got that CF Elite for rigidity. So you've got a similar sized blade, a similar shaped blade, not mm -hmm. quite as slicey, but not far off. And you've mm -hmm. got a solid grip there, very solid meaty handle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a great choice. If you're looking for a Benchmade knife, you know, you want that crossbar lock, that axis lock, and you want something super durable, and you just think the bug out is, it looks good, but it might be a little less knife, go with the Presidio 2. I dig I, it. It's just, it's great. It won't, I don't think it'll disappoint anybody. Um, don't let the, um, the fact that these scales are technically plastic throw you off. I mean, they don't, they don't really feel plastic. The way that they've given them this nice texture here um, gives it just just a lot of grip, but. Yeah, there's like a slight matte texture to it and it's not solid black either. There's a little bit of like sheen to it. Yeah, that's kind of um, what I was trying to, trying to say. It's not um, it's, slippery like plastic. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really neat stuff. No, I dig it. Mm -hmm. Good and, choice. Yeah, refined too. I mean, like this is very much a modern Benchmade design with the little touches that they do these days, like the, flat spot underneath the pocket clip on either side. Mm -hmm. So even though the texture's kind of aggressive in your hands, it's not gonna tear up your pockets. Yeah, great choice. Sometimes overlooked in the Benchmade lineup, um, but deserves another shot. Yeah. Especially with, now that they're not using the aluminum and they're using this new material. I yeah. think in a way it makes it, I think it's better. Even though it's not as like premium of a material, I think it's yeah, better. Yeah, how often does a manufacturer come out with a new knife design 
that's actually more affordable than the old one. Right. <laughs> Not that without, without sacrificing what made it good in the first place. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, for my first choice, I similarly went with a thing that didn't have the most premium handle materials compared to other siblings in its lineup, mm -hmm. um, and it's probably it's going to come as no surprise to you as soon as I reveal it, because <laughs> we've talked about it a bit on this channel. Or I've I've kind of been beating the drum about this particular model. It's a Civivi. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, there are so many new great Civivis. I just... What's what's the one? What's the one with the not as good materials? Oh, quote unquote. The Badlands Vagabond. It is indeed. Okay. The yeah. Badlands Vagabond uh, came out in January this year, and on paper, it's easy to see why I, I think people don't think of this knife as readily. Mm -hmm. FRN scales rather than the G10, which is so prevalent on the rest of Civivi's lineup. Uh, uh, 9 CR stainless, so it's not D2, it's not Nitro V or anything like that, mm -hmm. but still a super solid material. But the thing you're going to notice day to day is not the steel that it's made out of. You're going to notice the shape, the way it feels in the hand. And this knife, if you've watched any of our, uh, our $50 knife challenge videos we did a couple months back, has all of that. It feels great, perfectly balanced. The advantage at this price point is a $40 knife of the FRN versus G10 is you actually get some shape to them yeah. you know, as, as opposed to it just being a flat slab bolted onto the side yeah. of a, a letterboxed liner. So you get just such a better feel in the hand. I love the elegant lines of this knife. Civivi quality is great. Nice thin edges. I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful knife. One of my favorite budget knives, bar none, out there. You should buy one. I, I have. In fact, I good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, it's, it is underrated. The, yeah. the specs yeah. on paper, it just doesn't check the boxes yeah. that a lot of people think that they want. <laughs> um, and I don't mean to condescend to anybody who mm, does mm. prefer G10 scales and stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's but. the disadvantage of buying things off the internet, honestly, mm -hmm. is you don't get a chance to hold things in your hand. Which is why I'm, I'm happy to do what we do here on video is we can at least kind of tell you about some things that might get overlooked or, or some things about what makes a knife special that you're not going to be able to tell on paper. Yeah, yeah. This, this knife is special. It's elevated by an excellent design. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, none of the, none of the on paper specs would lead you to believe it's anything that great. But I mean, there was a, a version of this with a clip point blade, uh, the Ortis mm -hmm. that was out last year before this came out. But just the change to this drop point was enough to, to change it up just enough where to me, it, it just all comes together with this guy right here. Yeah, this is one of the best budget knives out there, period. I think one of the best Civivis out there. And I know mm -hmm. that's gonna be a, a controversial statement, uh, you know, the Elementum people and the Pintail people or the Brazen people, they're going to come after me, but uh -huh. try it out. If you're, uh, you know, if you, if you can get past the, uh, the inner, you know, mental block of, of the materials, which again, there's nothing wrong with the materials here. It's just not as good quote unquote mm -hmm. as some of the other things in for like 10 bucks more. Yeah. Check it out. It's, it's really nice. It's a really nice knife. Sweet. Sweet. Put it on the table next to the first pick. Excellent. I guess I'll keep rolling with the big brands, offer a lot of stuff. Okay. Picking something flies a little under the radar. Um, the brand, of course, is Spider Co. Okay, okay. I wrote something on a piece of paper next to me. Okay. I'm going to get it ready. I have it right here. Okay. Mm hmm. Go. I went with the Watu. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to I knew I one. knew you were going to have the Watu on the table, but I had to write it down just to <laughs> I might be the Watu's biggest fan. I think you might be. <laughs> <laughs> this knife is so good and so underrated. Uh, yeah, made in Taiwan. We've got 20 CV steel, uh, compression lock, deep carry wire pocket clip, you know, Spyderco's greatest hits. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And <sighs> The design, I know it looks crazy. Like, <laughs> I know, guys. At least you know you have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that's the first step into getting help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, put it in your pocket, put it to work, and it all makes sense. It's a beautiful experience using the Watu. And you know, there were so many, there are so many Spyderco fans and just 
knife enthusiasts more generally who have sort of been asking, really begging for thinner blade stocks, mm -hmm. thinner grinds, like let's focus on cutting performance again. Mm -hmm. um, this knife definitely has that. This knife has that for sure. Uh, the, the blade stock's thin, it's might even be thinner than the Delica. It's right right neck and neck. I mean, if we're talking, you know, thin slicers. Yeah, it's, 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 about, it's about the same, I think. Yeah, I don't have one here to Yeah, without one but, to, to compare um, it to. But the way, you know, because of this, this we'll call it a, I don't know, modified Warncliffe essentially, mm -hmm. the way it tapers down towards the tip and yep. the geometry just gets, you know, the spine itself gets narrower and narrow, narrower and narrower <laughs> as the more you go out uh -huh. towards the tip. It's, it's a little scalpel. It, it really is. That looks great, but you know, you, when you do hold it, or when I do hold it, I could see opening packages with, with it, slicing through cardboard, all of that stuff, no problem. Um, the ergonomics yeah. work a lot better than you'd think. It, it is a very neutral handle shape. I love the little run of jimping on the inside. I was just feeling that. Yeah. Yeah. Just a subtle bit of finger guard there, but you feel it. Yeah, you feel the texture more so than you actually are stopped by a physical guard mm -hmm. going up onto the edge, but it's enough to just give your, you know, as you're as you're using it, it's enough to make it thoughtless. You know, you feel that with your finger, you know, you know exactly how close you are to the edge. So when you're putting it to work, you don't have to think about it. You can mm -hmm. feel where, mm -hmm. where it is. Um, the compression lock is super fun. I mean, this is straight out of the box. This is not, I do own one of these. This is not mine. Uh, and I'm flipping it open and closed, no yeah. problem. I knew you were gonna pick the Watson. <laughs> <laughs> it's underrated. It it needs it needs uh, it needs some attention. Needs some attention. Some attention sure. paid to it. Yeah, the blade shape. It's another thing I love. It. I like the precision that you get with a worn clip. Just the control you have over the entire, you know, straight length of the blade. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels kind of the same to cut with the heel as it does with the tip. And even though there's a little bit of belly here, it still has that that super controllable feel of a worn yeah, clip. Yeah, yeah, it's got that flavor for sure. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it isn't a perfect worn clip makes this a whole lot more usable uh, on a cutting board or, you know, doing some some pull cuts, maybe some impromptu food prep. It just, it just works. And you know what else it does? <clears throat> it tail stands. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when it'll come in handy, but how many knives you know that can do that? Great. I <laughs> know it's a, it is a cool knife. It is it is an ugly duckling, but a knife doesn't have to look good to perform well. It's certainly going to perform well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the materials are there. The shape is there. Worth, a, sh worth a shot. Grudging respect from DCA towards okay. that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. More than I ever got. <laughs> it's more than you've ever given. <sighs> Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Next up for me. Um, we were talking about on paper specs mm -hmm. for uh, for that Civivi, and one of the thing that a lot of pe one of the things that a lot of people tend to look for is that three inch blade. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of the reason I think the Elementum is so much popular than something like the Badlands Vagabond. It's got that three inch blade, mm -hmm. um, but there's plenty of premium options that hit that metric as well. And one that I don't think gets nearly the respect it deserves is an Italian knife. It is an MKM. And if you if you care to wager a guess, I'll I'll allow it while I. No, no, jump yeah, jump yeah. right in. Um, the Colvera. Oh. Very cool little knife, and and your your expression right there said it all. It's like, oh look at that. I forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah, I underrated it myself. I yeah, think. yeah, that's what I thought was going to be so cool because I wanted to see what he would have what you were going to pick for some of these things because I knew I'd see something that I didn't give as much shrift to mm -hmm. as I should have. But it's a great knife. It's a Jesper Vaknea's design. Blade length, just under three inches, but this is no kind of dainty knife at all. You've got decently thick blade stock with that high flat grind, good compromise between like slicing and your uh, your bruter strength, so to speak. Titanium handles on this one, this is like 260 bucks. Uh, you can get G10, I think for just over 200 uh, normal price anyway. Full handle there. It's Technically kind of a three and a half finger grip for me, but I have plenty right there for my pinky to rest on. Solid hold. And it's it's a premium, premium folder. That can get work done, but still has that, you know, compliant blade, that three inch length that is gonna allow it to kind of fly under the radar in a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. Really cool Italian style too. Crown spine, beautiful titanium work. Milled on both sides, mm -hmm. yeah. 
and even internally milled for some weight relief. Mm -hmm. So it, it looks chunky, but it doesn't feel super chunky. Yeah. Definitely feels sturdy. Oh yeah. Mean, oh yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's just a solid, solid knife and yeah, just one of those great three inch knives. It's got a removable flipper tab there. So you, if you need oh, to remove cool. like the one hand uh, opening capability of it, you could, mm -hmm. um, for instance, like some places in Germany and the EU have, you know, some, uh, some more Byzantine regulations on features you and I have can, can and cannot have. Uh, so a good option for folks over there as well, but you'd never know it if you never take the flipper tab off here. It's perfect. Yeah. Just such awesome style. Like if you want to spend this much money on a knife, this is delivering a lot for your money. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful, beautiful work. And yeah, small, but not, not shrimpy, not, no, not uh, delicate in the least. Yeah. Yeah. You would never feel like you're, you know, you're sacrificing anything to get in that blade length with this particular knife. No, I like it a lot in a, in a pinch grip too. Nice wide kind mm -hmm. of handle there to, to rest your finger and thumb on. Yeah. Nice. I could see this working for just about anybody who needs yeah. or wants a, a blade in this size yeah. range. And I think it makes a little more sense to go with the slightly more expensive version here. Um, because if you if you want like a like a beater knife or a more workaday version, like I said, G10 is available, saves you about fifty five bucks. Which when you're talking, you know, like I think it's like two ten and two sixty five mm -hmm. between these two. So that was that forty five bucks. Math is a strong suit of mine. Um, there's there's better deals to be had for like like a, a hard worker. Sure. But that's that's why it makes a little more sense for the uh, for it to go for the fancier version. Of this particular guy. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you want a fancy knife. Yeah. Sometimes I want a fancy knife. Well. What do you mean sometimes? <laughs> I was going to make a Watu joke, but I, I couldn't come up with something real quick. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll leave it. <laughs> All right. You're up, sir. Okay. Underrated. This is an interesting pick because honestly, the people who underrate this knife are not the people who are buying it. And that is because it's the Victorinox Rambler. Mm. This little guy is my favorite keychain knife that mm -hmm. they make. Um, and yeah, the only people who really underrated, I think, are, are Victorinox. They get so much, the, the classic, which is- uh, Same size. Same size thinner. as this. Mm -hmm, thinner. Uh, the classic has a, just a blade, a nail file, and a pair of scissors. Great combination. The classic has dozens and dozens and dozens of variants. I'm looking up the the, uh, the uh, number of them on our site right now because it is an astonishing number. 85 different classic SDs. Mm -hmm. There's only one Rambler. Only one Rambler. Yeah. <laughs> and the Rambler is awesome. First of all, you get the blade on the uh, quote unquote correct side of the handle. <laughs> the keychain's on Opposite the other. the keychain. Uh -huh, so. You actually turned me on to this knife. I. It kind of flew under my radar as well until mm -hmm. you started beating the drum for it. And I've, I've featured it uh, on a few videos here for that exact same reason over the classic SD. And that's not even taking into account the extra tool you get there. Yeah. And the extra tool in this case is pretty sweet. Um, it is a combination bottle opener. It's got the little wire stripper notch and a fully 3D Phillips that seems to fit just about any Phillips screw I've ever tried it with. I mean, even big ones, you think it wouldn't fit? Eh, hmm. it, it seems to work pretty well. Um, and you get a bottle opener on your keychain knife, which the Classic doesn't have. Which means the Classic's not a multi-tool. <sighs> what <Checks> out. <laughs> the logic is unassailable. <laughs> little scissors, gotta give them a little snip snip. These scissors are fantastic. Yeah. Essential on a Swiss Army knife, in my opinion. Especially great on a little keychain size Swiss Army knife too, like cutting tags off of clothing. Oh yeah, little things yeah. day to day. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a firm believer in the Rambler. Thanks to Seth over here, um, he he's definitely convinced me of that guy right there. Yeah, worth a shot for sure. Um, I have an old Alox version that I love to death. It's been out of production for a long time, um, but I carry it on my keychain every day. Uh, it's, it's fantastic, and I'd love to see more Ramblers from Victorinox. Yes. Hopefully someday we'll get some more. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Very cool. In Excellent. the meantime, we just have this one red one, but if you're looking for a keychain knife... I mean, Swiss Army knife is red. Yeah. It's a red Swiss Army it knife. It makes sense. Like, that's the, that's the thing to get, right? Mm -hmm. 
No, I dig it. Excellent choice right there. Sweet. All right. Which one do I want to show next? Um, I'm going to go with another budget knife. Okay. I talked about this, this knife being one of my favorite budget knives out there today. Um, an even better bargain, though, is a CJRB that I have in here. And that is, it was one of their first releases, and it's kind of gotten overshadowed by some of their more recent releases mm -hmm. that have gotten a little more uh, refined with some of the contouring and stuff, and that is the Taiga model. Hmm. It is a $34 knife. So it's just two bucks more than the D2 Dozier that you used in our $50 challenge. Yeah. And for just two more dollars versus that Dozier, you know, I know I talked about design you know, on this Civivi being kind of the separating element, and I stand by that, but especially when you get into even less money, the features here are astonishing. Mm -hmm. G10, ball bearings in the pivot, D2 blade steel, stonewashed finish. What's the, what's the length on this guy? It's about three and a half inches. Uh, yeah, three and a half inch drop point blade. You don't have contouring. Like I said, you got the, you know, the flat slabs, but you've mm -hmm. got a deep carry pocket clip that's reversible. This is, or could be, a just about do everything knife yeah. for the vast majority of people out there. It can do outdoor stuff, EDC, some tactical, and it just works. The lockup is solid, the flipping is solid, it's a versatile shape, and it's $34. Yeah, wow. That is, that is crazy. It's, it's, it's another one that's hard to not recommend mm -hmm. in, in the budget space, and I, I haven't even beaten the drum as much for it as I think I should have on this channel, so I'm gonna start correcting that, I think. 34 bucks, insane. Yeah, wow. I mean, you don't get the contouring, but you do get the, the nice peel ply texture mm -hmm. here. Um, I do think it leans a little more into the tactical side with, with the big flipper mm -hmm. tab guard. Yeah, it, it is crazy to see what CJRB in particular are delivering at the price. For the price, I mean, Civivi kind of gets I think the lion's share of the attention, and deservedly so, like the fit and finish on them is kind of a step above where the CJRB is. Not that it's far behind though. And you're getting, if, if you're talking quantitative versus qualitative superiority, you are getting more for your CJRB dollars than you are with your Civivi dollars. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. You know, this is a great knife maybe to give to somebody, especially at that price. Like if you haven't, gotten a new knife in a while. And I mean like a while, years even. I don't even know what that would be like. <laughs> I can't tell you what that's like, yeah. But <laughs> we're, we're theorizing here. <laughs> uh -huh. For somebody who's not as tuned in to the knife industry the way it is today, which let's be, let's be real, there's a ton of people out there. Let's say, you know, this person got their last knife, maybe they got like a Gerber 15 years ago. Yeah, get their hands on one of these, it's gonna be a whole new world. I mean, even just the action alone, mm -hmm. like ball bearings, crisp detent. Yeah. 34 bucks. 34 bucks. Yeah. Fantastic. Underrated. Yeah, Quite. I can see it. Quite, yeah, it was one of their first releases and yeah, they started putting out more stuff that had like contoured handles. Uh, they were doing uh, just kind of more sophisticated things to their designs without the price creeping up too much. Um, as such, this one kind of got buried a little bit and it's a, it's a do everything knife for 34 bucks. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Now for you. Okay. What are we on? One, two, three, math, six, <laughs> number seven of our 10. Number seven. Uh, this knife is my personal knife and I had to bring my own in because this whole brand is so underrated that we actually don't have any at the moment. We will have some soon, which is why I'm, I'm showing it today as a bit of a, a teaser, we could call it. There you go. But I love this brand and I'm excited that we're gonna see more of them here. The brand is Brisa, and this is the Burke 75. Formerly known as the Enzo yeah. Burke. Mine actually predates the uh, kind of name change, so you'll see Enzo on the blade here, but the knife is exactly the same, mm -hmm. um, except for the laser marking. The brand is uh, from Finland, as you can perhaps guess from this very Puko silhouette. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they make uh, a lot of fixed blades, a pretty good price point, kind of, you know, 
more expensive than Mora, but not getting into the custom or small batch type of price range. Uh, but what I really love is, is this design. They only make a couple folders and uh, it's just phenomenal. Uh, I, I think the lines it's... are nice and clean, mm -hmm. which I always appreciate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's better known maybe in Europe uh, where they have better distribution for this mm -hmm. brand. But the, the implementation, the quality, and the materials for the price are, are fantastic here. I've had a number of these over the years, uh, and they have a bunch of variants. Mm -hmm. This one has a Scandi grind, which is pretty unusual and cool to see on a folder. But you can also get it in a more quote-unquote conventional grind, like a full flat, yep. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and the full flat grind, this has D2 steel. The full flat grinds come with S30V. Great stuff. Uh, these are going to be available for um, around $148, which is, I mean, it, for it's a, right for in a, there. You know, we'll, we'll, for lack of a better terminology, we'll call it a European-made knife. Mm -hmm. um, Finland's Europe, right? Actually, I think their folders are made in Taiwan. Oh. Yeah. The fixed blades are mostly made in Finland. But, Busted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no matter, I mean, the quality yeah. The quality speaks for itself. Here, let me hand it to you. Yeah, I've, I've fiddled with this a little bit before because, you know, that's what we do. We kind of pass knives around mm -hmm. <laughs> as we go. Um, yeah, they, they are very nice. You guys know I love a little bit of contour. I love this handle material, too. That's a, like a white linen. Yes, it is. Oh, mm -hmm. Very nice. High polished finish to it in this case. Feels great. I like the uh, the treatment of the tang here, too. It's not... It's not quite like it's lining up with everything perfectly, but I don't know, there's something charming about this right here when in the closed position. Yeah. It's got its own personality for sure. The way that they implement little things like the liner lock is kind of different than we're used to seeing on a lot of liner lock knives. Yeah, you've got to cut out on both sides mm -hmm. of the handle. Um, yeah, man. Solid, solid knife. It's just, it's one of those designs that I personally have just sort of been in love with for years and, you know, it's really served me well. Like this, I, I have come to really like a Scandi grind, even on a folder. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the best at everything. In fact, it can be a bit of an impediment for certain cuts, but the uh, aggression you get down at the edge with mm -hmm. a Scandi grind comes in handy a yeah. lot. Because you think like right at that edge, you actually have a steeper angle than something with a secondary bevel like this. Typically something like around about 12 degrees per side, give or take, versus something like this, which would be like 20 to 30, or yeah, about 20 usually. Yeah. I would actually say like 17 to 20, we'll say something like that. Um, yeah, for sure. So that, that initial bite makes it great for wood carving. Bush crafters love it, but certainly day to day, there's applications for that as well. Yeah, that, that's some quality that makes it great at carving comes in handy when you're, I don't know, scraping a label off something, you know, really trying to get almost some chisel-like work done, mm -hmm. getting underneath something. Even in food prep, you know, if my, uh, uh, I abuse my kitchen knives, I, I must admit it, I'll come clean. <laughs> so if my kitchen knives are a little dull and this is in my pocket, it even, you know, has the aggression to to get away with it, to get some, some food prep done. Yeah. Slicing a tomato, no problem. It's not ideal, but it works. Yeah. No, no, and that's, um, what I, that's what I mean when I say that the aggression behind the edge yeah. can can help in certain tasks. You know, it's not a tomato knife. No. But <laughs> nor is it a cheese knife, Thomas. <laughs> Definitely not a cheese knife actually. What's the uh, thickness there? About 5:30 seconds ish. Or is that, that's actually closer to an eighth, isn't it? I think so. I've done a bit of food prep with an eighth inch Scandi ground knife, and I definitely wouldn't want to go any thicker than that. Because mm -hmm. yeah, you are starting to run into some ge geometrical impediments, but yeah, it works. Yeah. I wouldn't be happy uh, putting this through a potato or a carrot. I think we'd see a lot of parts springing across. The definitely the carrots. You'd be getting some splits for sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's a great shape, and if that is the thing you're worried about, you get the full flat grind version. You'd be fine. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And another sub three inch blade, yes? Um, yeah, 2.9, just under. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, the pocket clip too. Just wanted to point this out because this design at this point is some years old. Um, I can't even remember, but more than five. Oh, uh, yeah, well more than five at this point. Yeah, and even before I think a lot of manufacturers were catching on to, you know, really refining their pocket clips, getting the, 
screws flush, um, the Enzo Burke. Or even doing deep carry clips. Yeah, yeah. It, had, it had it from the very beginning. Nice deep carry, flush screws. Um, yeah, this, this clip is one of my favorites. Works really well. Mm -hmm. Okay. My next knife, I think I'm gonna also go with something that, like your Enzo here or your Brisa might have slightly more specialized vibes, but can work outside of the range. Mm -hmm. I actually have a rescue knife here that I think is an overlooked EDC option, at least in this particular uh, variation that I'm gonna show you. It's a Hogue and it is from their Trauma series because you can get it with this, uh, this stonewashed sheep's foot blade right here. Um, and you know, this series kind of gets a bit of flack for being very close to uh, Benchmade's triage series. I absolutely get that. Um, but you can't get a kind of EDC friendly blade from the, the non-automatic triages, mm -hmm. but you can get it here. N680 steel, so you've got high stain, stain resistance yeah, there. super stain resistance. Um, excellent utility minded shape. Interestingly, I've, I've always said hogs are always tuned perfectly right out of the box. This is the first one that it's not quite perfect. This one needs a little bit break, of breaking in, mm -hmm. um, but that's the first for me. Um, on top of that, great utility minded blade shape. You do get an O2 wrench here. Probably not gonna need that day to day. You get a glass breaker and you get a seat belt cutter here at the back. Good to have, mm -hmm. um, but stays out of the way. If you never need it, you never need it and it doesn't get in the way. That's just a solid, solid hardworking knife. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like this blade shape a lot. I mean, obviously the extra features really sell it as a rescue knife, but I'd love to see this blade shape on a lot of hoax. <laughs> I could take this on a Deca, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, great, great. It's actually very close to uh, the Insingo shape on the Chris Reeves Benza. Oh yeah. Quite close. Yeah, fact. had they put a little swedge on here. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. Little, little bit more uh, belly out near the tip, but quite close, mm -hmm. very, very usable shape and very proven shape at this point. Yeah. But it's a rescue knife, so people don't necessarily look to it when they're looking for an EDC. And it is admittedly a bit of a uh, kind of a standout in the trauma lineup too, because they've got blunt tip versions, um, which kind of get the lion's share of the attention when the knife is being talked about. But that's kind of the sleeper there. Yeah. And this, I mean, the way that this tip is implemented, it would still be very easy to keep you know, it's safely away yeah. from whatever you were cutting. For those rescue you know, applications, yeah. So if you're looking to carry a rescue knife, but you don't want to give up too much daily utility, it's a great compromise in this particular shape. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I know a lot of folks who actually do uh, work on an ambulance or other such rescue operations. They'll have dedicated tools for strap cutting and, mm -hmm. and shears for all the the uh, emergency cuts they're going to make. So it, it frankly makes a lot of sense to have a rescue knife that works well as your EDC mm -hmm. knife. As a knife first, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way. And, and just treat these other kind of glass breaker and strap cutter as a backup tool. An off-duty carry, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the quality's there. I mean, it's ho, it's made in the USA, and the price is about you know just over 150 bucks for this version, so it's not unobtainable by any stretch of the imagination. I love it. I love it a lot. Yeah. Even if I would like a drop point myself personally, because I'm, you know, that's what I am. Great, great knife right here. Yeah. I can see why we don't tend to recommend this often because it is a rescue knife. It's so niche, mm -hmm. but I'd be happy with that as an EDC. Oh yeah. For sure. Oh yeah. It's going to get everything done for sure. Very cool. All right. Last pick from Seth. Okay. Uh, this one kind of gets to the heart of that on paper versus in hand distinction we were talking about that leads to skipping over maybe a lot of these. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually pulled two examples here because I think I wanted to show off the uniqueness of this brand in particular. The brand is Moki Handmade mm. Knives. This is their Serape folder. Uh, it's interesting, you got Japanese and Mexican yeah. uh -huh. influences together in one knife name right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, mo beautiful. black and white mother of pearl and yeah, exactly. This That's is beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. just beautiful. High polish everything. 
Um, Which is going to make Thomas very happy when he films close-ups. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry about that, but on camera, it just doesn't come through the way it does in mm. person. A, a polish like this, you, you really do have to see and handle to appreciate the way that these uh, Mother of Pearl have been inlaid seamlessly. Yeah, you can't feel it. so nice. Yeah, so wild. Um, I wonder if that's black lip mother of pearl and then standard mother of pearl to create that distinction there. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. My fingerprints are all over it, of course, already. Or actually, that looks like, that looks almost like abalone, doesn't it? Uh, that one I'm right there? Sure. We didn't have a ton of information on the site, partially because these knives are kind of hard to get. I mean, they're not super expensive. They're also um, kind of hard to not get your fingerprints on, yeah. I'm finding. <laughs> This one is $184.95. I pulled one that's a little more affordable too. VG10, Seki City, mm -hmm. Japan. Yeah. Check out the way the the, the back spring or the uh, the back lock just disappears when it engages. So when you open it, mm -hmm. it just completely goes flush. I was the blade. I was just looking at how invisible the pins are here. Yeah. You don't, you don't even see them. They're just polished away. You can kind of see just the barest hint of the edge there on the front. Just super classy. This I, I is... feel I'm, my OCD is killing me. I need to wipe the fingerprints off of yeah. this. <laughs> please do, please do. Wow. We yeah. are showing these off after all. Yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous knife. This, this exhibits just a mastery of knife making. Yeah, I would agree. So would much agree. hand work went into this. Um, it's it's kind of crazy for the price. I mean, yeah. I know $184 is not cheap by any means, but and people are gonna you know VG10 for that amount of money, but yeah, it does the, not the, check the boxes. The no craft, pocket clip, but the craftsmanship is what does elevate it for sure. Yeah, this would be an incredible gift knife or a dress knife. I, this is the kind of knife that impresses anybody. Yeah, which which yeah. is what makes it such a great gift. And I I wouldn't say that the quality of it is like truly custom level. Mm -hmm. there, there's a few, you know, just some tiny things. There's a little tiny bit of air gap here. For sure. But this, if this were like a custom handmade knife, this could easy, easily be a $600 knife. Yeah. If not higher. For sure. I mean, yeah. I don't even know what, you know, Mother of Pearl runs these days for, and that amount of precision there too. 600 might be a bit conservative even <laughs> for, uh, for something like that. Let me pull out the other one because it's even cheaper. This one is $134.95. Mm. I might even like this design better. It's micarta and then... Is that micarta? So it's got inlays in inlays. Micarta and then some more mother of pearl. Hmm. Um, and what they're calling green sea snail. Yeah, that was those green ones. Hmm. I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> green sea snail. Yeah, just the flushness here is is excellent. Very cool. Just very cool, man. <laughs> I know. As I lovers of knives, I, I, I know we'd appreciate it for sure. Very cool. I love it. I love it. I guess it's down to me now. Yeah. My pick is not nearly as nice as <laughs> these, and I already know I'm going to catch a little bit of flack for this particular oh, knife. Okay, great. Um, but we've talked about this. I'm ready for the heat. Let's the see. reason I'm going to catch flack for this knife is because a lot of people don't like the marketing or the image that this brand pr projects. Okay. And that's the James Brand Carter. This is a knife that was designed by someone who's passionate about knives. Yeah. It's, it's evident every square inch of it. Another sub three inch blade, mm -hmm. which people love. You've got a crossbar lock here, not something that's like a mass market feature, you know? No, no. Um, that, that's definitely a knife enthusiast lock right there. The elements of design and the way this was put together are really impressive. Uh, usually with a crossbar lock, it's really hard to get a handle shape that gets all the way, or that allows you to get your fingers right behind the edge. Mm -hmm. And yet, when it's closed, does not leave a gap between the tang of the knife and the front of the handle. I mean, the, the bug out is the perfect example of yep. that. Because you do have that handle that lets you get right there, but you have that, that notch right there. Doesn't bug me, but it bugs some people. and However, when you can eliminate that, that is something that a knife passionate designer did to yeah. make that happen. And then this section right here uh, in front of the handle scale, the negative space between the handle and the plunge line creates a bit of a triangle. The triangular 
thumb disc kind of fills that space a little mm -hmm. bit. Really good designer's eye behind that sort of thing. Handle shape, in addition to you know doing that trick that I showed you there a second ago, feels great even on the small version. Not flat scales on the G10 here, fills the hand. Very deep carry pocket clip mm -hmm. as well, which is reversible, or you can put the little uh, pry tab in there if you want it. no pocket clip. Uh, that comes right in the box with the rest of it. And I know the James brand is, you know, the, oh, it's a hipster knife. Put that to the side, put this in your hands. I was convinced as soon as I picked it up. I mean, it's, it's just truly good. And cleanliness on the handle too. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't like a lot of extra screws kind of cluttering up the visual aspect of it. Very, very clean handles. They have obviously worked really hard on the refinement. You know, I don't know how many revisions this went through, but to get all of those things together, the clean hardware, you know, the, the clean silhouette when it's closed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, tricky to pull that all off and still deliver a... Something that feels right. Something yeah, something that, that, that feels works right. right. And yeah. not just over overworked or um, like you're trying to just check a bunch of boxes. Yeah. This this still has its own identity. Um, and I, I must admit, I kind of like all the little uh, flashy stuff that they do, mm -hmm. like the color of this thumbstead. I, I appreciate that they gave us a pop of color there. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, I mean, you can get uh, Micarta versions of this as well. Uh, there's a larger version. Uh, there's just this one right here. It's VG10, about 140 bucks. Uh, two and three quarter inch blade. I forget what the other, the bigger one's about three and quarter, not quite three and a half if I'm remembering correctly. They're great, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. I like the implementation of this crossbar, crossbar lock too. A little bit like the way SOG does it. They have a stepped, I'm not quite sure how to describe it. Like pull tabs almost. Yeah, yeah. it's stepped yeah. pull tabs so that you have an even easier time pulling it back. It, As opposed to something like this that is a little more buried. Right, it's not. This crossbar lock here from Hogue. I like that it's different from the thumb stud too. Mm -hmm. So you can you can feel it. It, it. The ergonomics just makes sense, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. They instruct your fingers exactly how to use it without really even having to practice. And without being annoying too. Sometimes certain <laughs> knives will tell you, you know, you have to hold me this way yeah. and you don't like it, but that's not the case here. Yeah, prescriptive. <laughs> This, this knife is not that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's well thought out, but you know you can you can use this how it works for you. Yeah, knife people, check it out, man. It's really good. Definitely it's worth another look. Really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Ten of our five and five. Uh, some of the knives that we think are just criminally underrated right now. Um, I do like to think that the, the Badlands Vagabond's picking up steam based on the videos we've been doing, but I still think more people don't even think about it. Um, let us know what you thought down there in the comments. Uh, let, let me know what your favorite underrated knives are as well. And don't say Para 3, because come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's uh, about all the time we've got for today. If you'd like to purchase one of these knives, we will leave links in the description, as always, to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program as well, because if you're going to buy one of these knives today, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson. I'm Seth V. From the Knife Center, we're signing off. See you next time.